If you've ever watched a Will It Run or Barn Find Revival video of someone fixing up a really old car or bike, you may have thought to yourself, I wonder how hard this actually is for someone to do who doesn't essentially do it for a living. In this video, you're going to find that out. I'm not a mechanic, I have no formal training, but I do have some experience with projects like this in the past. I'm going to take this 1988 Honda Shadow 1100 and try to make it capable of comfortably taking me on a couple hundred mile road trip. This bike sat in my friend's dad's house for eight years, basically untouched. And when it's all said and done, it'll probably be as expensive and less reliable than just buying something that runs and hasn't been neglected as badly as this thing has. Before we get into that, let's be clear about something. The question is never really, will it run? But will it run with minimal effort? Is it gonna be worth it to make it run? Almost anything can be made roadworthy again with enough money and effort. I mean, there are guys out there like CJ who are rebuilding bikes that have literally completely burned down. So you might be considering picking up an old cheap bike you found on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and trying your hand at fixing it up, but wondering if you really want to put in the amount of effort it's going to take to get that project across the finish line. So the goal of this project is going to be to either inspire you to pull the trigger on your own project or save you the absolute misery of starting a project and then realizing you're in way too deep. I've had a fantasy of a really long road trip on a motorcycle for a long time and I've also always loved barn find and restoration videos so this video is going to be a good combination of the two. The way you're seeing this bike now is after a good amount of work but when I first got it the tires were ruined, the brake system was crusty and it didn't run in the slightest. You might also be wondering why the brake caliper is zip tied up here and not connected to the rotor and that's actually something that happened after I got the bike running but we'll circle back to that later on. I think a lot of people might ask, what's the point when I'm saving neither money or time and definitely increasing my odds of getting stranded on the side of the road? The answer to that question is honestly the same as a question I've been thinking about a lot lately, which is why are these Will It Run videos so popular? Before we get into that, we'll rewind a little bit and I'll show you what we're working with. I've been wanting a Honda Shadow for a long time now, and my friend hit me up and said he was in Oregon visiting his dad and his Honda Shadow, his 1988 Shadow 1100, he gave it to him for free, and then he gave it to me for free. So, we're gonna be getting this thing running. Mostly complete, it's missing one of the air ducts here, and a couple of the side covers, and it needs all the stuff you'd expect after sitting for you know, eight or 10 years. So, tires, gonna do brakes, all the fluids. Right now, the next step is pulling the carburetors. I threw a battery in it, Got it to crank over, but there's like some pops and bangs. So I know we have spark, but it, it doesn't want to even try to idle. So today I'm rebuilding the carburetors and hopefully we'll have a running bike at the end of the day. So after some struggling, the carburetors are off. They get really stuck in those rubber boots on old bikes like this. So a lot of lube and heat and just like working it. As you can tell, my sweatshirt's off. So it, it was not an easy time. But they're off now, I'm gonna pull them apart and put some new gaskets in and clean out the jets. I'm all done cleaning it up, I'm just putting it back together, getting all the new seals in and O-rings, getting all the mixture screws put back. And I'm pulling apart the uh, old float bowl gasket. It's so old and brittle, it's basically a piece of plastic. It's just coming right apart. This next clip is right after putting the carburetors back in. Sorry to spoil the surprise, yes, it will run. I was having a pretty bad day, so. I overreacted a little bit to the first startup. Uh, I was pretty excited. Actually getting the engine to fire up and idle was probably the simplest and most straightforward part of this build. Can't complain though, it's nice to know the motor's healthy. Now I can move on to worrying about all the other small things. Let's fucking go, baby! These are some old Shinkos that came with the bike when I got it. So I'm gonna throw these on. The tires on the bike are totally cracked up and trashed. And then all the other regular service stuff. So motor oil. That oil is fresh. Probably has less than 100 miles on it. But it's okay, some cheap insurance. 
air filter because it was buggered up and full of uh, leaves. The shaft drive oil and the uh, washers and O-rings that go with that. And then flushing the brakes and the clutch. Clutch should not be like this. So putting new fluid in and hopefully that fixes it up. Worst case, I'll just have to rebuild the master, but I don't think it's gonna be that. I think it's just air in the fluid. Oh uh, yeah, so that's not going. And I've stripped these out before, which sucks because then you have to drill them out. So I'm gonna try to find a Phillips that fits that head better. Oh, that's dusty. It's gonna look really bad in here. Mm. Oh, that's that's a fun stench. Nice and gummed up. So I cleaned this out pretty decent. Good enough, not perfect. Hopefully we get we get clutch pressure. So why do people enjoy these 45 minute long videos of YouTubers restoring neglected old junk? These videos are great because they let people live vicariously through the creator and get that satisfaction of starting up a motor for the first time in maybe decades. When someone talks through how they fixed something or diagnosed an issue, we follow along and get to feel that same sense of achievement. There are tons of YouTubers out there also with fancy brand new flashy bikes and cars, but there's no sense of personal achievement from just buying something and driving it around in my opinion. And some people can't even afford to do that if they really wanted to. So the next best thing is going to be watching someone on YouTube do it. I think most motorhead type people have gotten somewhere down the line of some type of project or build. And whether that actually finished or never even left the Facebook Marketplace app is a whole other story. A lot of you probably have some type of project sitting in your garage gathering dust or something you're trying to work up the courage to buy. But instead of doing that, you're on your phone or computer watching this. I 100% have been in that spot before, so when I know what it feels like to be totally stuck on a project and feel like you'll never get to finish and enjoy it. And I know what it feels like when you do finish a project and all that work winds up totally worth it. Dude, you need to take the exhaust off. That's the axle. And it just it's just gonna hit this on its way out. All the videos of people doing 200 miles an hour and wheelies on the freeway really show the highlight reel of the quote unquote bike life. And for me, that's just the surface of what it's really all about. My first bike was this 1980 KZ750 that I bought to turn into a cafe racer. It sat in my garage for 10 months while I replaced every single piece of rubber and seal on it to try to get it to where it is today. That wasn't really an issue for me because I was as excited to work on the bike as I was to ride it. Working on a bike is actually extremely calming and therapeutic, at least when it isn't making you want to bang your head against the wall. Watching someone on YouTube do it is pretty nice as well, but it doesn't really compare to physically touching and working on the machine. Is it always fun? No, obviously not. Snapping an exhaust bolt or finding out you have to buy some expensive part you weren't planning on sucks. The reason it hurts is because I want that end result so badly, and when I finally get it, it'll feel that much better because of the work it took to get there. For example, here you can see me struggling to pull off my exhaust, and basically I'm going about it the wrong way entirely. I'm leaving that in the video to show that you don't need to be a master mechanic to do this stuff. As long as you take your time and you're careful, anyone can do this type of project. It's a lot less investment to watch it on your phone, but it's a lot more rewarding to actually do it. But I got ratchet straps onto the frame just to support it side to side. Most of the weight is on this jack so that I can have the rear wheel off the ground. And then I got the front over here on a front stand so that I can get the wheels off and get tires put on. And speaking of highlight reels, a lot of these will it run videos are literally that. You don't see them scraping gasket surfaces for hours, making the third run to the parts store for the day, stripping out threads or any of that. But here's the thing, the process isn't nearly as easy as most YouTube videos make it look, and that's not a bad thing. It means you shouldn't care it's gonna be hard and take a long time to do, because when it's done and you look back on the process, 
All you'll remember are the fun parts and the highlights when you're riding a freshly rebuilt bike down the road that's unique, that no one else has something exactly like the bike you built with your own hands. I'm not gonna lie, this looks and feels extremely sketchy, but you gotta do what you gotta do. How's the jigs are coming? I think I'm good. Fortunately, the front wheels on these is a lot easier to take off. So that'll just be a couple bolts. Then I'm headed over to the dealership I used to work at and they're gonna throw the tires on for me. I think that having a perfect and super organized garage is a little bit overrated, as you might be able to tell. I kinda know where everything is and the amount of time and effort it takes to keep a shop looking perfect. Some of these YouTubers that have like flawless, completely clean garages. I don't understand how they do it. I think maybe they hire a maid or something. I, just, I couldn't do it myself. last few days I made a progress that I didn't film just the boring stuff putting everything back together and when I went to start it up and take it on its first test ride I had no spark in cylinder one so that turned into hunting down an electrical gremlin and my ignition coils had a short to ground somewhere in the harness between the CDI box and the ignition coil I just uh, peeled open the wiring harness and found that wire at the halfway point um, then I just snipped it and tested which side had a short to ground still, and then just spliced in a new wire from that point, that middle point in the harness back to the CDI box. The correct way to do it would be to just split the harness all the way open, find the damage, find the short, and patch everything. And it's kind of a hack repair, but the bike runs perfect now, so I'll show you that. This is how it looks all put together. So it's warm, because I just took it for a ride. But it starts up great even when it's cold with just choke for a few seconds. So yeah, she runs great. Now I just gotta take her on a nice test drive. I'm recording this with the last 4%. Right now I have my brake caliper zip tied to my forks because when I was getting off the freeway, my front brake started smoking. Then I realized when I tried to move that they had completely locked up on the off ramp on the freeway. So I'm lucky I didn't just lock up and, and fly off the bike and die. Um, so I pulled those off so I could get myself home. Uh, and then when I was halfway home from where that happened, the bike started spewing coolant all over the ground. So no front brakes and no cooling system and I'm stranded and I'm waiting for my friend to pick me up. Um, I'm not gonna say this is like fun, but it's definitely part of the adventure. So, um, cool bike went by. So, um, eh, it's part of the, the thing. There's definitely a lesson where if you're gonna rebuild something old, to, to pay very close attention to the brakes because if those fail, so I'm not having a good day. <laughs> There's a puddle of coolant over here on the ground where I pulled over first. That's everything I'm going to accomplish in this video. There were some setbacks and issues that I'm going to have to tackle and figure out. After the lockup, this brake rotor might be unusable. The pads definitely are. And both master cylinders are going to need a rebuild. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to take my road trip with any degree of security or safety anytime soon, but I'm a couple steps closer and hopefully you enjoyed that. 
So hit the subscribe button if you want to see part two. And next episode, we should be finishing this thing off and getting ready for my first trip, which will probably just be uh, about 100 miles down to Santa Cruz and back from where I live in the Bay Area.